up y'all it's your girl sakina and i'm back for another review this is my review for ready to love this is season four episode six i'm coming to y'all at night okay fresh off watching the episode well not necessarily fresh because i did film another video before this but you know what i'm saying like it was another you know it's tonight basically hell i ain't gotta worry about filming tomorrow i can just enjoy my saturday and do what i want to do but anyway yes let's go ahead and get into this review now we see that it is the ladies weeks to the ladies weeks the ladies week to send the men home the power is back in their hands so tommy is down at the ladies lounge with them he's like close your eyes and think about the man that you're attracted to and amber sees chris Bernicia sees joelle and he was like well <laughs> funny thing is you're not going on a date with them um you're actually going on a date with somebody that is in your bottom or your second choice basically because that's what alexis did now speaking of alexis Alexis, let's just go ahead and hop into the date that she had we see that she went on a date with her second choice which is ron now it's funny well i ain't gonna say it's funny but you know she is his number one and he is her second her first is aj and i said mm, okay we're gonna see how that turn of events go at the end of this review but anyway yeah so you know that's her second choice she wanted to go on a date with him they played putt putt now he done pulled up to the date honey and swooped her up picking her up and embracing her and stuff i said oh oh wait 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 i'm getting sidetracked y'all see that outfit <laughs> when y'all girl gonna learn when is miss fly gonna learn this matching set with the little frittlies here and then the zip up there and then the snake skin boots the snake skin boots with a matching set, a matching jogger set with snake skin boots. But she fly. She fly. In her eyes, she fly. Okay, anyway, yeah, like I said, Ronnie came in. He liked what he saw. He didn't pick her up and, you know, doing the most. I would have been like, uh-uh, Ron, put me down, okay? Because one thing about it, I do not like when dudes first get to know you and all of that and it's your first time hanging out and they want to be all touchy-feely. Get off of me. Put me down because I don't want you to be thinking that something is going to come out of this at the end of the day, that you're going to get some cat. Like, uh-uh. Cool it down, okay? But you know what? It's Alexis. We know she like all that freaky deaky sexual talk and all of that. So that was right up her alley. I said, okay. Now, um, they start talking about some things that was concerning for Ron. You know, we know Alexis is an ex first lady. So religion and her faith is very important to her. But she said, you know what? That's not even an issue because I like the fact that you can take control and that, you know, you're a leader. So she's attracted to him because of that. And then they got into the topic of AJ, you know, that's her number one. And she was like, you know, he is kind of a player. So I don't know, you know, that's something that I would normally be attracted to. But, you know, I also do have an attraction to you. So, um... She was like, well, while we at it, we talking about you. What's going on with Chrysanthemum? Because I know that you have a connection with her. So where you at with it? And he was like, well, you know, I, we we doing more than what me and Chris is doing. You know, we here with it. We talk every day. You know, they're making steps to actually make a good connection in a possible relationship. So he said that he sees the ability to take he sees the ability in Alexis to take him beyond what he could be. And I said, okay, Ron. Like, I, I really do like him so far. He is really showing that he is really in this for the long haul. And he's just not there for a pretty face. That's why I said last week that, you know, he really is starting to grow on me because it's not just on a, a shallow basis for him. He's really trying to dig deep and figure out who he can actually have a real connection with. So out of all the men, I would definitely say... Yeah, I would say that Ron is definitely the one that is taking the steps in the right direction to really find his connection. And then next, I would say Jason. But yeah, Jason, I kind of like got my eye on him too. He said that Alexis is a good catch and he could see them being a power couple. So I said, okay, Ron, look, you, you getting up there. I said, one thing about it, Alexis, you need to go ahead and choose Ron because AJ... Yeah, you already have like these playboy vibes about him, but you need to go with the guy who is showing you the most attention. I had to do that um, not too long ago. I was into a certain guy and, you know, I was just like, 
child, you know, he fine and he this, this and that. And then I just realized like, you know, there was like, he was putting in effort and you know, I was kind of like, you know, just kind of like, mm. but then after a while he started making me feel some type of way. Meanwhile, it's this other guy who is like, you know, out there, consistent, persistent, all of that. And I had to make a conscious effort to leave old boy behind and focus on the person who is really putting all of his uh, efforts and attention into me. I mean, granted, that didn't work out either because I just I wasn't interested anymore, honey. But anyway, yeah, I just had to I had to do that. And I want Alexis to do the same thing. Don't go for the dude that's fine and, you know, talk a good game and all of that. Go for the dude. I mean, the other dude was attractive too. But, you know, go for the dude who is actually about something not saying that the other one wasn't but you know he's putting forth the effort is what i'm trying to say like go go for him okay because he putting it all out there for you girl go ahead anyway we see that aj and amber go on a date you know amber is not here for aj he is on her bottom and it's because she just feels this playboy vibe from him and it's just like uh-uh so she ends up telling aj that like yeah i feel like you're arrogant i feel like you want to be chased and that's the reason why I didn't want to get to know you because, yeah, it's just a no for me. You're unapproachable. And she just said that, um, he said that he wants her to match his energy. Like, you know, if I'm putting in effort, you need to be putting in effort too. And I totally understand where Amber is coming from because I said this in one of my previous videos. I have been dealing with, I don't even want to say dealing with, but you know, this guy been in my DMs and all of this and he been texting me and all of this. And he was like, um... Yeah, you know, I feel like the energy needs to be reciprocated. And I'm looking at him like, you want me to chase you when you be in my DMs? No, that's not, you got to give something for me to even determine whether or not I'm interested in you. And honey, you're doing the bare minimum. You really ain't doing shit. So how in the fuck do you expect me to be chasing you? That's not how this shit works, sir. You need to be coming after me and then I'll determine whether or not I want to give you the time of day. Like, uh... Some of these dudes got the shit, mm, got the shit all wrong. But anyway, it's just a no for her. And I didn't see it for them anyway. Um, we see Chris Anthem, Chris Anthem, Chris Anthem, and Chris KG Smooth. They go on a date. You know, he was on the bottom of her list. So she wanted to explore that. Um, Chris's outfit looked really nice. I really did like that. But they bonded really over um ain't shit daddies, basically. Um, Chrysanthemum, I'm gonna need you to stop telling the story about your mama and how she wanted an Italian baby. I'm assuming her mama is black and her dad is from Italy or something. Did y'all interpret it that way, that her mama is black and her daddy is Italian? That's how I took it. But it's just like, it's giving me the vibe that your mom is one of those people who is, you know, so determined to have a mixed baby or a baby with good hair and all of that. Like, I don't like that type of stuff. That stuff do not sit well with me. You are not making your mom look in a, uh, look a good way. So I'm going to need you to go ahead and stop saying that because that's not a good story to tell. Chris said that, um, KG Smooth, he said that, you know, his daddy wasn't claiming him for a long time. And he found out from his cousin that... His dad ended up passing away. He never really get, got to know him. And then Chrysanthemum was saying, well, her mama, you know, she's not really an affectionate, affectionate person. And it was the same way with her growing up. You know, she, it was an alarm behavior. So she really wasn't like that. Okay, G Smooth was asking, okay, so how does that work when you're trying to be in a relationship? And she was like, I mean, I really don't do relationships. So they're having a conversation and Chris is trying to fill her out. He was like, you know, I'm feeling like you're 70, 30. Or was it 60 20? I think it was 70 30. 70%, you feeling the vibe, you feeling the conversation, but 30%, you not. And she was like, You right on the money, honey. I feel like we having a good conversation, but it just ain't really going nowhere for them. And I mean, I already expected that because it, it was no spark. I mean, yeah, they had a good conversation, but it was more so on a friend level. So, I mean, hell, it is what it is. He's talking about something, you know, I could think about as Amber. Just like J-Dub said, you putting all your eggs in one basket, Chris, the same way you did with Naya. You ain't learning from your mistakes, and it's really starting to piss me off because you're supposed to have options out here, but you so damn stuck on Amber and her faux locks, and that shit is getting on my damn nerves. Like, you need options. I need everybody to understand you need to date around on this damn show. Don't just focus on this one person. Yes, have that one person in the back of your mind. But explore shit. Now we move on to Amber and Joelle. I said, baby, one thing about Amber, she is making her rounds, okay? 
That's somebody who's actually exploring. Yeah, she got Chris in the back of her head, but she's out here taste testing these other entrees, okay? So anyway, she go on a date with Joel. You know, he come up doing all that baby, da da da. One thing about it, Joel is gonna milk that damn accent in his New Orleans slang. I said, okay, Joel, I see you. And I'm finally starting to see the braces on his bottom row. Hell, I need some too. She, jo Joel, hit me up. You know, get me connected with your dentist. Oh, he in Houston. He ain't in Atlanta. But anyway, yeah, or orthodontist, you know, you know. Anyway, um, yeah, he started landing on thick, honey. He want to go up to her and, and kiss her on the cheek. I said, oh, okay, look at you. Look at you. Doing a lot real early. He going to flirt. He going to flirt his way through it. Amber was eating it up, you know, she let him kiss her on the cheek and she was like, maybe I'll give you one at the end of the day if everything goes well. So they get into a conversation and uh, she asked him, does he want to get remarried? Yeah, he want to get remarried. We know the story with him losing his wife and all of that. He's still open to all of that. So he asked her, how would you feel dating a man that's at least 11 years older than you and has two children who has lost their mothers like how would you handle that and she was like you know i could never replace their mom but i do like kids and i like older men and all of this so you know she's saying all of this stuff that he likes to hear he was like you know usually i don't go for tenderonies because they don't really be on the right track but it's something about amber you know i'm gonna go ahead and give her the stamp of approval because she talking to me real nice and i was like okay she talking to you real nice because little do you know joelle Amber is a go along to get a girl, uh, go along to get a girl, go along to get along type of girl, okay? She is definitely a person that gives me pick me energy and she gonna say whatever she need to say to stay on the show and whatever she need to say for you to get to like her. So yeah, you know, they start feeding each other and you know, it was vibes being felt and all of that. I mean, I wasn't seeing it. I wasn't really feeling the vibe. I mean, he was just being Joel, the flirty Joel that we know him to be. And you know, she felt the vibe and she gave him a kiss on the cheek. Now she said that she felt bad for giving him a kiss on the cheek because of Chris. I said, girl, it's a kiss on the cheek. It's not that serious. I wouldn't feel guilty about that because it's just a cheek. Like, Okay, girl, move on. Next, we see that Liz and Jason, they finally go on their date. Remember, you know, Jason was giving her the eye when she walked into that masquerade ball, slaying that dress and that hair was laying and all of that, okay? And then she showed up to their date down at the Ferris wheel, giving body. She had this one-piece suit off the shoulder. It had a little belt at the waist. The waist is snatched. I said, Liz, Liz, you better, you better let them know. You better let them know that you are not average, okay? I said, see, one thing about Liz, she she's saving certain pieces to pop out in. I said, okay, Liz, I'm here for that. You know, you know, half of these girls on here don't really give me fashions for real. Everybody who was on their date really wasn't giving me anything, but Liz definitely gave me body, and I was here for it. Um, she asked Jason how he felt about you know no sex before marriage, and he said, you know, it'll be a hard thing to do, but if we are working towards being married. I'm with you. Let's do it. So, you know, that was music to her ears. And uh, he also said that he was okay with dating an older woman. I think he's 36 and she's 40. You know, it's not a major age difference. So he was fine with that. Now they get on the Ferris wheel and, you know, they're uh, admiring the city of Houston. And then next thing you know, Jason goes in for a kiss. I don't want to say necessarily go in for a kiss. They was face to face and he went like this and kissed her. And I was just like, um, it was too soon for me. It was too soon for me. I just feel like if y'all are going to get to that level, at least take me on a second date. Because as I was watching him, I was not really feeling a romantic vibe. I felt like, yeah, it was two people having a good conversation, but I didn't see it going anywhere further. I feel like that kiss was just too soon. And I felt like it was his way of trying to stay and secure his spot on the show. That's exactly what it was giving me. I like him, but I just, I'm side eyeing him with that move because it was like, what are you doing here? Like, I, I, I just didn't feel the vibe. If not, am I the only one who was feeling that way? Because it was just like, mm-mm. It was giving me very forced. Like, uh-uh. Here y'all go again, trying to use these tactics to stay on the show. So, um, anyway, yeah. She said that she felt some type of way because, you know, she don't want to disappoint David. She definitely is feeling him. But, you know, she enjoyed her date with Jason. So, I said, okay, we'll see. But it was giving strategy. 
on to the next. We see that Kyra and AJ go on a date. Child, we already know Kyra said that Jason is her number one, but she want to go ahead and see what's going on with AJ and explore it a little more. Now, they did go on a little sexy, intimate date, you know. You know, they, they say that he pulled out all the stops. He got a private room and he got candles and he did all of this. Now, y'all know damn well production in the own network pulled this together, but okay, we just gonna have it. We just gonna leave it at that. Um, she said that she does like AJ and she wants to explore him because he's more of a wild card. They end up playing Never Have I Ever. They both cheated before. They both been in love. AJ said that he'd been in love plenty of times. And she was like, okay, so what was the issue? Why didn't it work? And, you know, did, did you communicate what you needed out of the relationship? And he said, you know, I did communicate, but I don't know how effective it was. And when he said that, she was like, okay, well, obviously there's some problems going on. Because y'all's love languages aren't connecting here. Like, there's some type of communication that's breaking. And he was like, well, she started to use some type of example. Because he was saying, um, well, yeah, I mean, just because the communication isn't effective doesn't mean that it's a problem, basically, is what he was saying. And I'm like, yes, it is. Because if we're talking and we're not coming to an understanding... Honey, it's just falling on deaf ears and I'm beating a dead horse. What the hell are we talking about if we can't have some type of resolution or understanding when we're talking? And as she's going into this, he tries to like break out in a joke or whatever, like taking the conversation lightly. And she was just like, I just feel like I, it's like some weird shit that goes on when I talk to him. And I say, see, he's playing while you're trying to really unpack what's going on with him and dig deeper to get to know him as a person. And I don't like that. When people start doing stuff like that, it's just a major turn off. And baby, I don't want anything to do with you because if you can't be serious, I'm all about joking. I love a funny guy and all of that. But if you can't be serious and have a good conversation with me or have a deep conversation with me, then honey, what are we doing here? Go about your business because you think this shit is a game. Like, and he was talking about, well, you know, I had trust issues. And, you know, men love to say that the reason why they do this, this and that is because they got trust issues or because somebody broke their heart and all of this. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. So, um, he said that he struggles with communication and that was a part of his last relationship. It really stemmed from his childhood and his mama being a single parent, you know, him being, uh, the oldest, he was really independent and, um, you know, he became a loner. So he said that he struggled with being interdependent on a woman. So they really just trying to get down to, you know, the reason why he is the way he is. And Kyra is just hopeful and wants them both to put in effort to really get to know each other and build a connection. But um, AJ said, you know, he's willing to do that and take a risk because he is ready for love and he wants companionship. He is in her top three. She said he's been in her top three since day one. I said, okay. I mean, he was El Cheapo, but all of a sudden he's been in your top three since day one. I said, see, it's, it's giving. It's giving Rashid and Adriana tease. You clinging on to somebody that you're familiar with. But okay, sis. And I'm like, okay, so is El Cheapo moving his way up to El Guapo? Even though we know that uh, Own paid for that damn dinner. Anyway, next day we see Vernisha and Dietrich. Honey, when I tell you I was rolling my eyes, and I'm about to roll my damn eye at this damn lonely ass braid that keep popping out. But I was rolling my eyes this whole time. Like, oh my gosh, Dietrich really irked my damn nerves. Anyway, he said that he likes Vernisha because she wants love, and that's commendable. She won't love as well as the other women that's on this show, including the men. Like, oh, what the hell? That's not an exclusive trait. I was just looking at him like, uh, okay, you just talking so your ass can stay on the show. But go ahead. Um, <laughs> he said that he feels a connection and he been thinking about her. Again, another strategy so he can stay on the show. You ain't been thinking about her. You have not been thinking about her. Have you been texting her? Have you been reaching out to her? Because I didn't get any of that by by the way of the date. Like, I just didn't feel like y'all were reaching out to each other or y'all were really building a connection outside of this date. Like, I'm just looking like, what? And I'm like, wait, hold on. Because you just told us by way of Tressa that you didn't like four-figure women. 
The only difference between Vernicia and Tressa is that Vernicia's arms is a bit smaller than, than Tressa's. Tressa got a little more meat on her on her arms compared to Vernicia. But all of a sudden you like four figure women and you know you see a spark going on with you and Vernicia. Ain't no damn spark. Ain't no damn spark whatsoever. I'm just looking at him like, um, yeah, you you really out here trying to secure your spot. And it's just a no. So he asked her what her expectations are out of this process when it comes down to a man. And she was just like, I just want you to lead. I'm looking for leadership. I'm looking for a man who can hold it down. And, you know, as far as being a man, everybody interprets that different. Everybody has their own set of rules, guidelines, and, you know, all of that. But she's just looking for a man that can lead her, that can kind of take off the load for her, you know, not even financially, just kind of, you know, relieve her stress a little bit. And he was like, okay, so do you see that in me? She was like, um, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you these questions because I'm trying to figure it out. Let me switch. Let me, let me bring some hair this way because that, that thing is getting on my nerves. Anyway, yeah, she was like, I mean, I don't know. And I'm like, yeah, she don't know. What have you even done? What have you done or said to even help her determine that? I'm just looking like uh, He was just bothering me. He was bothering me. He was bothering me. So then he goes and says that she was tough. And she was like, I'm not tough. I just have a zero tolerance for BS. And he was like, that's tough. No, it's not. That just means she ain't going to let somebody walk all over her. You should want a woman like that. And then he goes and says, you make me nervous. So that just turned her off completely. And that would have turned me off too. Like, I mean, at this point, baby, we just need to go ahead about our way, go about our business because it's a no for me. He's talking about, um, well, she said in her confessional, you know, if you can't be a leader, then what's the point of me having a man? This is the whole point of why I want one. You intimidated by powerful women and it's a no for me. This is the reason why I gravitate towards Joel because he's confident. I need a confident man. And Dietrich, you ain't got that in you. Uh, Sorry, not sorry. He gonna say, you make me so nervous. I don't want to eat, but I do want to walk you to your car. She said, thank you. I said, hello. Thank you. Yo, yo, walk me to my car. At this point, baby, I need to go. He gonna talk about <laughs> It was just the fact that he said that as if that's a prize. But you know what? At this point, it is a prize. Check, please. Get me out of here because I got to go. He won't hear from me ever again throughout this process. I'll see you at the reunion, but I ain't going to talk to you, child. Like, I would not give Dietrich the time of day because, yeah, you don't even know what to say on a damn date. So, bye, Dietrich. Uh... Anyway, we see the ladies down at the ladies' lounge, and they're all discussing their dates with Tommy. Alexis said that the date with Ron was magic, and yes, you know, we already know that she is his number one. Now, as she's saying all of this, we got Chrysanthemum salty than a motherfucker, talking about, mm, she seems to think that uh, she's his number one, but um, I'm his number one. I said, you can continue to think that if you want, but you already know damn well that Ron told you that Alexis, this is number one, where y'all went salsa dancing, and then he showed your ass down at the masquerade ball when he stopped the conversation with you to go talk to her. You saying all of this in your head to boost your ego because you can't believe that he's picking Alexis over you. Bye, Chris Anthem. Like, girl, you need to be going home next because, yeah, people people ain't really making no damn spark with you. Stay mad, sis. Anyway, that really just makes me like Alexis. Like, I know she can't dress, but this episode did kind of give me a different view of her. Like, I don't know. It, I, I, I kind of like her a little bit. But y'all know Kyra... And Renisha are my top two women. Um, Amber, she started talking about the date with Joelle. And she's gushing and blushing and doing all of this. And then she goes and shares that they kissed. That they kissed. That's all she said. We know when somebody say, oh, yeah, we shared a kiss. Our minds are automatically going to go. Are going, is going, our minds are going to go to y'all kissing on the lips. She never clarified that y'all kissed on the cheek. I said, oh, that's another strategy to make Vernicia mad. I felt like she was doing that to get under Vernicia's skin. And it worked because Vernicia was like, yeah, um, I'm kind of disappointed that he kissed her. You know, we have a connection. He hasn't kissed me. And I was like, yeah, because the bitch is lying. Okay? I don't like that at all. And it definitely made me side eye Amber. Like, you clearly lied and you didn't even try to clear it up. Like, you just... What, what is that? Lying through omission? 
Is that is that the definition? Is that the right phrase to use? Look, I don't want to be using shit wrong. But yeah, I was like, you definitely left some truth out. I think that is the right term to use. Anyway, I'm just looking like um, you are not to be trusted. And just for that, I don't I don't like you, Amber, because you you did that. Um, Kyra said that she went on a redemption day with AJ and she really liked it. It was very romantic. It was the best date that she ever had. And I said, mm, okay. Like I said, she trying to change El Chipo to El Guapo. But go ahead. She said she's really torn between Jason and uh, what's the name? AJ, because she really likes both of them. My camera today just, or my phone, don't want to see me win today. Like, I don't understand why I keep cutting me off. But anyway, yeah. So, she was saying that Jason is gentle and AJ is a flirt. So, she really don't know what to do when it comes down to them. And, you know, Liz, she feeling Jason. So, she kind of looking and, you know, she was telling Tommy about the date that she had and how it was enjoyable. And then she told them about the kids. They did a flashback and they kissed twice. Like, I don't know if I had my head down taking notes or whatever, but I didn't notice that they had kissed twice up until then. I said, oh, okay. Yeah, Jason was definitely landed on thick, okay? But <laughs> go ahead. Anyway, Kyra is feeling some type of way about this because we know that she has Jason as her number one. And she was like, hold on, wait. You kissing him? Oh, okay. Just know that I'm coming for that number one spot. Hey, skin, skin, plop, plop. What you doing? I'm coming for that number one spot. She coming for you, Liz, okay? So you better watch out. And it looked like from the looks the next episode, she's doing just that. She said she's very competitive. So, you know, she, she is not going to stand for losing, okay? Um, They talk about the people that they are not feeling. Vernisha said, Dietrich, it's enough for me. Like, nothing against him, but it's just, yeah, mm -mm, as we already knew. Um, they talk about Chrysanthemum being with Chris. She said, yeah, it's a friend zone type of vibe for me. Alexis said the same thing. So did Kyra. And then they talk about Amber and AJ. We knew right then and there that that was going to be the last time that they was ever going to try to explore something with each other. So then, um... Kyra, not, no, not Kyra. Uh, yo, Kyra did get offended. Like, hold on, wait. You trying to go in on my man? And Amber was like, but hold on, wait. Y'all just tried to go in on my man. Like, no. Okay, I'm definitely about to come for yours. And yeah, I'm not feeling him at all. I feel like he a playboy. And it's just enough for me. So as she was saying that, um, oh yeah, she was also saying like, he want me to chase him? And no. So Vernisha was saying the same thing. Liz was saying the same thing. Even Alexis said the same thing. I said, oh, but he was just on your number one earlier on in the episode. I said, baby, you tw you switched up on his ass with a quickness. But hey, she feeling Ryan. Like I said, I want her to go after Ryan anyway. So go ahead, sis. Y'all, my hair. My hair today. My hair today. Um, Kyra is feeling some type of way. She's talking about, you know, I feel like I got to be protective over him. I said, uh-uh, you need to calm down, okay? Let El Chipo do what he do, okay? I understand that we all have different connections with people we may feel different vibes and personalities may not mesh and all of that but don't be overprotective over him girl hold on simmer down a little bit kyra now mm -mm. i don't need you to be going in diving in deep while aj over there doing the damn most so aj and dietrich are in the bottom we see that alexis is talking to aj and you know he feeling some type of way like oh okay i'm here with you what's up and alexis is like i mean You've been kind of hard to reach, so that's the reason why we ain't really been talking. You know, he tried to play it as if she was the one that was hard to reach, and she was like, no, it's definitely you. So as she's trying to tell him about himself, um, it kind of just reminded me of what Amber was saying. Oh, I'm sorry, I just got a notification. But it just went in line with what Amber was saying. Yeah, obviously you want to be chased. She's reaching out to you. You ain't reaching out. You want to be chased, honey. We ain't got time for that. So then she was just basically trying to tell him about himself and he just farting his whole way through. I said, strategy again. And that goes along the lines of what Kyra was saying. You know, she's trying to have a conversation with you and you trying to flirt your way out of a situation. Like you're veering the conversation somewhere else. And I said, see, yeah, I don't like that. He grabbing her hand and he trying to place her on his lap and doing all of this. And Alexis in her confessional. Y'all know how she get down. <laughs> 
I gotta focus, Alexis, focus. Yeah, please focus because this is definitely a tactic that he that he's using and you're falling for it. Like, girl, get up off that man's lap. I was happy to see her. Get her ass up and sit in her damn seat because, yeah, it's definitely giving me survival. Um, And I was asking, too, where is this energy? Where was this energy coming from? Did you use this energy off camera trying to text her and all of that? No. Yeah, because you stopped reaching out and all of a sudden you on a chopping block. And you want to be all affectionate and doing the fucking most. But when she does it, it was an issue. And you don't like being overly sexual and all of that extra stuff. But yeah, you want her to sit on your lap and you doing all of this extra touchy, touchy, filly, filly type shit. Like, back the hell up, AJ. It's giving me Playboy vibes. And I'm really side eyeing his ass. Um, She really wanted to tell him... Um, what was I about to say? Yeah, she was telling himself about, you know, how he fucks with everybody and it doesn't make any of the girls feel special. And like I said, he reaching out, touching her hand. And then he had the nerve to say once she was like, you know, we did decide to keep you, you ready to love and all of that. He gonna try to produce a fake ass tear. I said, face dry as hell. Eyes not watery a damn bit. Oh, that, yeah, see, mm-mm, mm-mm, by AJ. Mm-mm, I won't be mad if you get sit home because you really playing the game. Dietrich and Kyra, the ladies are not feeling you. Simple as that. Bye, Dietrich. I called it last week. I said either him or Chris were going to go home. Chris definitely was in the talks of being in the bottom. But AJ was just, you know, not doing it for the girl. So he ended up being in the bottom with Dietrich. Dietrich is actually a nice looking man. He took it in stride. You know, he was like, I'm going to take a break from this. But, you know, I'm going to come back and find me a little boot thing. We ain't going to worry about that. Now, my predictions for next week. It's uh, who's going home next week. I think Chrysanthemum is going home next week because she really doesn't have a connection compared to the other ladies. We didn't even get to see David in this episode. I thought he may have been on the bottom. I don't know if, you know, he was out because of something. But, yeah, nobody was interested in going on a date with David. So I said, oh, well, damn. Anyway, let's get down in the comments and talk, y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this review along with the episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.